Monica examined her bizarre reflection in the mirror and let out a howl. What the hell have you done to me? Just a bit of DIY, replied Alec, sporting a smug grin. I look like furniture, complained Monica. Her cushioned posterior slumped heavily down on the dressing table stool. Alec began to recount how he had remade her. The skeleton consists mostly of Meccano and straight bits of track from my model train sets. I got access to a 3D printer at the Further Educations College for the skull. Then I scavenged up chips and circuits from all the gadgets and electronic bits and bobs we had lying around the house. Finally, I upholstered the whole kit and caboodle with the material from that old sofa we had stored in the garage. I died, said Monica. I saw them switch off the life support machine. How is it that I'm still here, looking like this? I uploaded your consciousness before you passed, said Alec, then downloaded it back into the bank of improvised receptors I implanted in the plastic cavity of your 3D skull. Monica trembled and felt her cloth crawl. It was an unsettling sensation. <laughs> How could you afford that, she demanded. It costs millions to do something like that. I always hated how those deceased movie stars in Hollywood got themselves downloaded into those creepy-looking mannequins. It wasn't natural. Alex blushed and confessed. I bought some second-hand equipment on the dark web. Second-hand, yelled Monica. Stolen, more like. Alex shrugged. Did the job. Here you are. And look at me, said Monica, pulling a loose thread from the twill of her wrist. Just look at me. Why did you do it? Why did you bring me back like this? I'd have thought you'd have been proud of me, said Alec. Did this all by myself. Research, design and construction. There was a lot to figure out, you know. How to connect up the optical nerves, the vocal cords, the audio and neural receptors. Then I had to figure out how to reanimate you. In the end, it was a good old sample of a uh, good old set of jump leads what did the trick. In consternation, Monica squeezed the spongy stuffing around her kneecaps. For what purpose? To turn me into a bloody walking armchair? Alex sat down in the bed. I'm not getting any younger. I'd have been lonely without you. Ah, said Monica. Now we get to the truth. You still want me to run around after you, to cook for you, to pick up your crusty wife runs from the bedroom floor. <laughs> Alec took her hand. There was no real sensation when his fingers wrapped around her velvety digits. <laughs> it won't be like that, he told her. It'll be me looking after you. You're going to require a whole lot of maintenance. There will be repairs. Worn bits will need patching up. There's bound to be a rewiring job at some point. Maybe a few upgrades every now and then. I've been stocking up on spare parts. And I certainly won't be letting you go anywhere near the cooker. That old sofa wasn't flame retardant. <laughs> this is the bloody fitted kitchen all over again. He was in his element. He turned him in, her into one of his projects. Monica withdrew her hand. And what happens when you die? Did you think of that? Do I get a job as some sort of freakish advertising mascot for furniture land? Alice looked offended. Don't worry, pumpkin. I've thought of every eventuality. I'm building a mannequin for myself. The skeleton is halfway done. It's on a frame out in the shed. I've measured my bonds so I can get another skull printed, and I've started in on stripping the leather from the seats in that old Bentley I was planning to restore. It'll make a fine skin. Before the time comes, I'll teach you how to operate the consciousness uploader. Monica folded her arms beneath the plump cushions of her breast. And we just live happily. We just live happily ever after. Is that it? Why not? Asked Alec. Immor immortality should not just be the privilege of the rich and famous. I'd say the future pretty much belongs to innovators like me. Monica began to wail again, rocking back and forth on the stool, stretching and rippling her material. I don't want this. It isn't who I am. There's nothing left of me. Not a thing. There is. Alec insisted. I managed to keep something, something important. Look in the mirror, see what it is. Monica rose wearily. When she shuffled back to the mirror, the cra carpet crackled under the static of the nylon lining sold into the soles of, her, soles of her padded feet. At first, she couldn't see what it was that Alec was talking about. Then her eyes fell upon the forlorn pair of eyes that looked back at her 
from a reflection. She stared at them for a long, long time. They were her eyes, not synthetic replacements, her actual eyes, the ones she'd been born with, the ones that she'd have closed forever when she died. She watched them well with tears, watched the tears soak into the corded fringes of her eyelids, saw deep into the anguish of her captive soul. <laughs> 